So what is going on guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the, I was almost going to say forgettable maps in COD Zombies, simply because I don't really ever see people talking about it. Even I forget it exists sometimes, and I think it's a strange one because that describes what the end of BO4 was. Alpha Omega and Tag Dirt Totem, the two final ether maps, for me have always been a little bit forgettable and even though Tag to Totem was the end of the Ether story, I bring up that cutscene time after time because it's very relevant to a lot of what we talk about. But as for the map itself, even when it was new, when it came out, it felt like it just flew by like that. Like it happened and that was it. We moved on to Cold War pretty much right after. There wasn't really too much time to reflect to say how good this map was or wasn't. All of the easter eggs that it included felt like they were solved pretty quickly and we just don't really hear much of it anymore. Whenever I see people make COD Zombies videos, or whenever I see people talk about zombies on Twitter, even BO4, Tag to Totem is rarely mentioned. It's usually the first couple of maps, Classified and Blood of the Dead, but not the end of this game. Which is strange because Tag to Totem has always been a map that I've actually quite liked, and compared to its original Call of the Dead, I may be the odd one out here, but I prefer it. I think Call of the Dead did a lot of things better than Tag to Totem, but in terms of me actually wanting to play either of those two maps, I'd more than likely pick Tag to Totem if you had to give me an option of the two to play forever. Why? Well, there are many reasons for this. One, Tag to Totem just feels more relaxing. You don't have the constant threat of George following you around the map 24-7. You can sit back. You don't need to put a headset on. It's bigger, it feels more open, the visibility is also better, maybe that has a part to play in that. Because Tag Dirt Totem is on BO4 Zombies, you could argue that it's easier than what Call of the Dead was on Black Ops 1, along with its countless easter eggs, the characters, and because it was the end of the zombie story, I almost feel like it's kind of a forgotten map. But because no one really talks about it, I can't get a good idea of whether people agree or disagree. For all I know, maybe the majority don't like this map. Perhaps there is a reason why people don't really mention it. So anyway, as with all of the other maps in this series, I'm going to go over the three main things that I think make a zombies map, and this is the gameplay, easter eggs, and the story. And starting off with the gameplay side of things, talking about something that I've just mentioned, and that was the fact that compared to its original counterpart, one of the main things that made Call of the Dead annoying for me, which in turn also makes Tag Dirt Totem more relaxing, was the fact that there was no George. We saw something similar on Moon with the Astronaut, another enemy that constantly follows you around, but the major difference was the Astronaut is killable. George is as well, but if you've ever tried to kill either one of these enemies in Zombies, you will know that the Astronaut is doable, whereas George, he is an absolute bullet sponge. I always ask the question, is it really worth killing him? For the Astronaut on Moon, I would say yes, just because it's easy. Whereas for Call of the Dead, I would say no, because he comes back not long after anyway, and it takes so much of your ammo. You could also say that was one of the good things about Call of the Dead. That's what made that map the challenge it was. It was definitely an experience, and maybe this has something to do with the age that I was when Call of the Dead was relevant. During BO1, 2011, when that map would have come out, I would have been about 14 or 15 years old. One, I wasn't that good of a Zombies player, and two, it was pretty scary. That was probably one of the reasons why it wasn't one of my favourite maps. So, here we are now, over 10 years later, me now being 24 years old, getting to play this map again without George. It doesn't have that same horror aspect that the original had, but I don't mind. There is no mist, no visibility problems, no George, but all of those things make it a map that I don't mind playing now. Whereas, I don't know, it was those things combined with a few others that Call of the Dead just stressed me out. Tag to Totem is a very chill, relaxing map. So, even though George was cool, it's nice to get a version of Call of the Dead that doesn't include that constant threat of someone following you around. You don't have to be aware of your surroundings 24-7 like you did on that map. The other reason why I liked Tag to Totem was the characters. Now again, the Call of the Dead cast were okay. Out of all of these celebrity casts that we've ever had in COD Zombies, so the Mob of the Dead crew, the Shadows of Evil crew, obviously some of the characters in the Chaos story, I would say, and it's a shame because they are good characters, but out of any celebrity cast we've had in Zombies, these have always been my least favourite. Not to say they're bad, but Victus are a set of characters that, over time, I've come to know, we became more familiar with, and by the time we got to play with them again in Tag Dirt Totem, we hadn't done that since BO2, it had been such a long time, it was something that we'd been asking for, so to finally get to do that in Tag was nice. Again, this is just a personal thing, but I prefer Victus than the Call of the Dead cast. They were both good, 
but I just thought these were better. And one thing I've grown to appreciate over the years, having played Cold War and Vanguard Zombies, is how important a set cast is. Continuing on with the gameplay side of things, that then brings us to the Wonder Weapons now. This is is the area in Tagdo Totenen that I do think, even though it's an improvement in my opinion on what we got in Call of the Dead, I still think it lacked. We had actually three wonder weapons in this game. The Tundra Gun, the Wonder Waffe Scaf... Scoff... Schutzer, and we also had the Thunder Gun. So basically the Tundra Gun was pretty much an iced out version of the Thunder Gun. The Wonder Waffe Scaf... Schutzer was like a sniper version of the Wonder Waffe DG2, and we all know what the Thunder Gun is. So there were three Wonder Weapons in this map. The Thunder Gun is amazing. It's a legendary Wonder Weapon. We know how good that is. I never actually found the Tundra Gun and the alternate version of the Wonder Waffe better than their original versions. That's not to say they're bad, but if we compare them to the two Wonder Weapons that we had in Call of the Dead, the Scavenger and the VR-11. There is no doubt in my mind that the Tundra Gun and the Wonder Waffe in Tag are much better. So yeah, they were good Wonder Weapons. It was just strange because I don't think they were an upgrade on their original versions, which is really what they should have been. This map also had these zip lines, which is always good when there are multiple ways to get around, especially because this is a big map, and the flingers as well, which are fun. Something that I thought was really cool was the golden pack-a-punch machine. Now, every time I see this, I always ask the question, was this really necessary? No. Does it make life that little bit easier? Yes. Essentially, what this does is, because in BO3, you could upgrade your weapon a total of three times, meaning you would have to purchase the pack-a-punch three times and put your weapon inside of it three times, that obviously takes time although not too long with the golden pack a punch it lets you do all of this with just one purchase so instead of three so it costs you 5,000 points which is the regular pack a punch price you place your weapon in and it will give you a fully upgraded weapon whereas with the normal pack a punch you're going to end up spending more than this and it'll take you longer is it necessary no like i said it felt like more of a gimmick but to see a gold pack a punch machine is always cool i will say though it's not just something that's there for everyone you do have to do steps to unlock it so it's not something i can recommend for anyone casually playing the game who doesn't want to do his dregs to do but you should try it for yourself and then the final thing in terms of gameplay i should have also mentioned this for the weapons category along with the wonder weapons but this map has a unique lethal grenade it's classed as which is samantha's music box i would say it acts similar to a ghost device in terms of you throw it samantha will appear out of a portal which looks awesome she will then lift up any zombies near her they will be suspended in the air and then just as samantha disappears the suspended zombies die they get thrown away like i said similar to a ghost device in terms of anything that goes near it they get sucked in i'd say that's the nearest thing i can compare it to and then as we move on to easter eggs i've just spoken about one of them samantha's music box but tag the totem is a map that has a ton of these like a lot of the maps in beautiful zombies did obviously it had a musical easter egg in fact it had two these were a light from the shore and reflections there are a few easter eggs revolving around the wonder weapons and how you can get them for free i'm not going to go through how you can do that but it was nice and this is also the way that you'll get the thunder Gun. Another easter egg which is pretty funny revolves around yellow snowballs because Tag the Totem takes place in Siberia. We are surrounded by ice. You can actually pick up snowballs in this map but there is an easter egg where you can get yellow snowballs which if you throw them at the zombies until those higher rounds they are a one shot kill. That was really it for the useful easter eggs and then there were a few miscellaneous ones as well. Obviously jump scares there's a couple of these in tag there's also an easter egg where you can get yourself a fifth perk you can find george's glasses on the table which of course was a tribute to him since he passed away and the last one i want to mention the biggest one in my opinion was you can actually see what looks like mars if you are familiar with zombies you might know what this is referencing and that is shangri-la because there was a theory a long time ago that shangri-la takes place on mars now with the canorium and with extra information that we've had in other maps we know that shangri-la takes place in the himalayas but there was theories and even till this day people still don't believe that it's on earth that shangri-la takes place on mars and i'm guessing that this was Treyarch's final easter egg in the final map for black ops for the end of the ether's timeline this was them kind of trolling us i guess you could say teasing us saying maybe shangri-la was on mars obviously it wasn't and to confirm this when you actually enter this area you can hear the shangri-la loading screen music playing at the same time i mean just look at it it doesn't even make sense because there's a lake in front of us a boat and then right next to us we have mars um something here seems off but looking past that this was triarch um trolling us so there we go that is my summary of tag der toten what i feel was one of the most forgettable maps in cod zombies but also 
pretty good. Underrated, you could possibly say. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.